God, brother, that's the one I want to hang around. That's the one I want to be around, brother. I, I'm not the one that's discouraged all the time. I, I, but thank God I want to be around the very ones I, I, that got something going on in their life. I, I, that's a positive today. Amen. Do you realize today this electricity, that's the way it works? That positive attracts that negative, don't you? Uh -huh. And you know, they begin to come together, you know, and then both of them makes a positive. That makes a little bit of excitement, don't it? You say, preacher, what are you talking about? You take an old, you take an old uh, light switch loose and you touch both them wires. Now, you can touch one of them. It don't matter which one, you just touch either one of them. It won't bother you. You can turn it loose and you can touch the other one, it won't bother you. Now you take a hold of both of them, brother, you're going to get excited. Right? Right. You're going to get a bit of excitement going on. Uh -huh. They're going to be fire jump, and you're going to be jumping around. Uh, you're, going to, you're going to get to moving a little bit. Now uh, that's amazing to me how so many Christians uh, can say I'm a child of God and they come into God's house and sit there for two or three hours and never smile. They've not got no joy. Uh, they sit there now like a knot on the log. Uh, brother, I tell you today, uh, you say you've got God in your life and got Jesus in your life and if you can sit there like some dead person, our brother, something's wrong. Amen. You want to see some excitement, you get a go over there in the old stove and you take an old hot coal out and take it over in Thornton Granny's lap, brother. The little old woman that just, that's all she can do, just barely get out of bed. And you let her get sitting over there in the rocking chair. You take an old hot coal out of the fire and throw it in her lap and see what she does. <laughs> Brother, you, Granny's fixing to get excited. <laughs> hey, she, Granny's going to jump. She's going she to run all over that house. Yeah, it may have to kill her by the time it's all over with, but she'll get excited. It's amazing to me, Bobby, how somebody claimed to be a child of God and they've got this hot coal out of that Jesus. Christ in the life and sat there and never said a word. I'm going to tell you, we've got joy in our life. Here they brought this man on the bed. He was sick. Brought him to Jesus Christ. And you know why they brought him to Jesus? Because they had been there themselves. Right? They knew he was the healer. They knew what he could do. They knew that they had been healed herself. They knew that there was times, you know, that they were discouraged. Friend, they don't get me wrong. There's going to be discouraging times for Christians. But thank God, I promise you, if you just put a smile on your face, thank God, and just start serving Lord Jesus Christ and start calling his name, the Bible said the devil will flee from you. Well, I tell you, it's not a shame. To, it's not a shame to get discouraged and be a pity in yourself a little bit. But it's when you want to have a party at it. That's right. Yeah. And we'll get down. We want to have a pity party. We want this one to pet us. We want that one to pet us. Uh, brother, I tell you what. How many times did this man go by somebody? Now think about it, folks. How many times would this man, the palsy, go to go by someone? And they look at him and say, I feel sorry for you. Mm -hmm. Ain't that what people say? Yeah. We start telling them what's wrong with us, and the first thing you'll do is say, I feel sorry yeah. for you. Yeah. Brother, don't feel, <laughs> glory to God, don't feel <laughs> sorry for me. <laughs> I thank God pulled me to what? <laughs> oh, that can help me. Yeah. I thank God just don't feel sorry for me. Yeah. And feel pity on me. I oh, thank God get me to what? <laughs> oh, that can help me today. Yeah. son be of good cheer yeah. you know instead of getting getting dirtier and 
in sin, we, brother, we need to get out of it. Amen. Instead of going deeper in the valley, brother, we need to start climbing. A lot of us today, we've got to the place anymore in our life. We're satisfied down in the rut. Oh, we got satisfied down in the, uh, the hole that we dug ourselves in. I will pray to tell you all what we need to do today is to make our minds up. I thank God, brother, I'm going up and not down anymore. I thank God I'm glad. I thank God I'm glad. I met Jesus and He gave us a way out. Showing up. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. He looked at me, he said, Son, be of good cheer. Yes. Right. Be of good cheer. Chris, we need to take that to heart. <coughs> yes. If there's ever been a time we need to put a smile on our face, Amen. please smile. Amen. Why in the world would somebody that you're trying to witness to and trying to get them saved and trying to get them born again, uh, brother, why in the world would they want, let me say it this way, why would they want to come to a church uh, that every time they hear you talk about it, uh, brother, you're running it down. Uh, you're talking about this one and that one and how sorry and low down uh, the preacher is. Uh, brother, why would they want to come here and preach? Uh, brother, why would they uh, want to come to a place Place. Our brother is just as much turmoil as it is at home. Come on, friend, I'll tell you what. But if we'll be a good cheer, we'll put a smile on our face and we'll let them know what Jesus Christ has done for us and thank God what he can do for them. Our brother, it won't be long until they turn around and they come back and thank God they'll come to the Lord Jesus Christ and they'll get what they need. Yes. Amen. Jesus looked at him and said, Be of good cheer. Uh -huh. Yes. Be of good cheer. If anybody had a, if anybody at all had a reason to be discouraged that day, it'd been that man that was sick. Right. Huh? A lot of times we get sick. Yeah, we get sick. I'm, I'm, and folks, don't get me wrong, I'm not a good patient. My wife will attest to that. I'm not a good patient. When I get sick, I bumble, I grumble, I complain. But the thing about this, I try my best to get as far away from anybody as I can because I don't want to hear them, I don't want them to hear me grumble. I, I, I don't know about anybody else. I don't know how you are. But when I get down, bro, I won't be left alone. Bro, when, I, when I'm in misery, I just seem to take it myself. And I'm going to say this. If I'm in misery and you can come around and cheer me up, Brother Larry, you do that. <laughs> hey, I could use it. A lot of times, you know, just like in Job's case. You know, Job was so so far in misery. He had lost his family, lost his health, lost his home, lost his cattle, lost everything that he had. And he was in misery. And the Bible said he had three friends. And if you'll read those three friends, they spent day, several days, 24 hours a day, seven days a week with this man, trying to encourage him, trying to cheer him up. And you know what they done? You know how they done it? Putting him down. Uh, saying, Job, why have you sinned against God? Surely you've done something wrong how to get yourself down here. And just kept putting him down and everything else. Uh, brother, that's not the right way to cheer him up. That's right. Right. That's right. Right. But thank God after a while, this one young <coughs> man spoke up and he said, I'm going to tell you something, Job. God told me to tell you that, hey, this wasn't happening to you just to tell me it's you. Uh, but this has happened to you that God you might get the, the, the praise and the glory Amen. and the honor Amen. of your life. Thank God it was after that. And old Job turned around. <clears throat> Brother, he began to pray to God and give God glory for what God was doing right in his life. Friend, I'm going to tell you today, if you sit here today and you think that God ain't working in your life, you need to open your eyes. Amen. If you don't think God's blessing you, you need to open your eyes. Amen. You need to look around a little bit. I look around at the things you do have. 
And brother, just think about what you'd do if they wasn't there. Amen. Brother, think about what you'd do today if you didn't have the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Brother, I'd be of all men most miserable. Yes. That's what Paul said. Amen. Paul said, if I had hope in Christ only in this life, I'd be of all men most miserable. Yes. And it's no wonder you're in misery today. You've left God so far behind. Bless him, Lord. Yeah. You've outrun God. You've left God, you know, and he's, he's trying to get back into your life. He's trying to get to, in control of your life, and you won't allow it. But, friend, I promise you, if you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, thank God to give him full control yes. of your life. And thank God he can turn it around. Amen. Amen. Just like he done that young man when they brought him down to, the Lord, to Jesus Christ. He said, Son, be of good cheer. And I'm going to read you this other verse I read to you a while ago. I'm fixing to come up on folks. I read to you in Proverbs 17, 22, says a merry heart doeth good yes. like a medicine. Amen. Right? Amen. Well, listen to what he said. But a broken spirit dry the bone. Mm -hmm. Brother, you can lay down on God and you can dry up on God if you want to, but not me. Amen. Brother, I made my mind up a long time ago. Thank God I like to smile. I don't know about anybody else, Amen. but I like to be encouraged. I like to be cheerful. And if it offends you when I put a smile on my face and start praising, Lord, I don't know what to do for you. <laughs> because, brother, like I said it before and I'll say it again, if you don't believe in shouting, you better pray God don't put you on the same cloud I'm on that I leave this one. <laughs> brother, because I guarantee you I'm going out with a shout. Thank God I like to enjoy God while I'm here. And I'm going to enjoy it while I'm on the way home. Amen. Amen. <laughs> He said, son, be of good cheer. Yeah. But too many of us today, we can't because of so many things that's going wrong in our life. That's right. But I'm going to tell you today, it doesn't take being in good financial shape. A lot of, a lot of us today, we get discouraged because we're not in good financial shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got bills coming out of our ears and Things we can't pay, things we like to do, we can't do it. Mm -hmm. We get discouraged. But I know a lot of people that's got plenty of money. They're still in misery. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Brother, our financial shape should not hinder us from being cheerful. <laughs> our health should not hinder us from being cheerful. Amen. There, we used to be a little woman used to come sit right here. Yes. Weighed probably about 80 pounds, soaking wet. Yes. Yeah. If there's anybody had a right to be discouraged, it would be a her. Yes. That's all she could do is walk. But I saw that little woman, she was well, she was over 80. And that's a fact, folks. I saw her over 80 years old walk right up through here, and she, was, she had to be led into church. She had to be helped in the church. Spirit of God got a hold of her. She had started shouting a praise the Lord. Walked yeah. up here and stood flat footed and jumped all the way up. God <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tell you, uh, our health today don't have to discourage us. Amen. We can put a smile on our face if we're on a deathbed. Amen. We've got something to shout about. Amen. We've got something to be joyful about. Amen. 